What's up, YouTube? It's been a long time since I did a live stream and um, had some that I wished I had recorded yesterday that would have been good information for somebody out there. So, I'm headed to Carboro to pick up a permit for a install job and um, I'll give the stream a couple of minutes to get some traffic and uh, we'll be back in just a minute. Welcome to viewer 234. I'll start talking in just a little bit. I'm helping the state pay for the new 540 um, belt line. Take exit 59 AB up to US 64 toward Pittsburgh. Welcome to viewer number five. Six and seven, welcome to you too. I suppose that's plenty enough people to talk to. It's enough of an audience, I suppose. Hi, it's been a long time. So, a couple of weeks ago, um, old school Eddie went out to a rental property that... Um, was complaining about a noise, I think it was, but I don't believe the air conditioning was having any trouble working. It was just making a noise that concerned him. Um, so he goes out and fiddles around with it and uh, replaces a capacitor, but can't narrow down anything else at that point. So he leaves and I'm on call that night so I get a dispatch says technician just left units not working uh, how fast can you get out here so I checked in with Eddie and he told me what he had found and what was going on that he knew of I go out there and I start fiddling around and I'm getting back feed electricity from the heat strips to the contactor on the unit. It's a Goodman package unit. I think it was a GPH 1324. Um, so I'm back feeding power, high voltage power from the heat strips to the electric heat or uh, contactor for the Compressor. I was trying to track down a wiring diagram and I couldn't find anything that made any sense online and there was nothing in the unit for the heat strip specifically. Um, and the back feed was not causing significant issue, but it was seemingly odd. So, um, at that point, it was, I don't know, it was late and uh, dark and hard to see and the bugs were eating me up. So I simply disconnected the Molex plug for the electric heat um, to the package unit and that eliminated my back feeding power. A week or so went by and the customer called back saying, you know, when, the tech, when I had left last time, I had mentioned that the uh, electric heat would not work and it was starting to get to where they were thinking about cool or heating season coming up so they wanted us to get back and try to finish the diagnosis. So I get back out there and um, start looking through the system. I did get a hold of a wiring diagram for the heat strips thanks to Tom Powell and um, 
Zach Ciotta and Brent Ridley and Joe Shearer all uh, threw in their assistance to get that wiring diagram. Um, so I double checked the electric heat wiring diagram. Everything's fine. Trace out the wiring diagram for the compressor side of the system. Everything's fine. Um, but at this point, anytime I turn on both breakers with that Molex plug connected, the breakers trip. Just immediate tripping. And um, it's going to be kind of hard to keep the, the punch line, you know, up in the air for very long. But what it turned out to be was that some other contractor had been in there before we were, and it looks like they had replaced the heat strips. When they replaced the heat strips, they had to disconnect the high line voltage to the heat strips and then reconnect it. And when they did that, they switched L1 and L2. And most of the time, single phase power makes no difference. But if you've got two breakers stacked on top of each other, two double pull breakers, line one on the top breaker and line two on the top breaker are the same leg as line one and line two on the other two breakers. So if you take line two and put it on line one at the condenser for the electric strips, you're creating a dead short. Um, so at that point, phase does matter because if you take line one and line three, just for instance, to keep things a little bit more straight, hopefully, those are the same leg on both breakers. Line two and line four are the same leg on the panel box. And if you have those switched at the connection of the um, heat strips themselves, it's a dead short, line one to line two. So I chased my tail <coughs> for quite a while until I finally realized that that was the situation. It would have been uh, one of those videos that I started and uh, quit recording after a while because I didn't want to, you know, get aggravated and broadcast my own aggravation. But um, I know I, I had seen it before where it kept tripping the breaker and I don't remember if I found out the same thing at that point, but it had been a couple of years since I'd seen that particular issue. So that one was a good bit aggravating. Let me see what we got for comments here. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for your comments. Um, is that NorCal? Mr. NorCal Refrigeration, how are you? Good to see you're alive. Um, I'm going to get off of here in a little bit just uh, to keep my data consumption as low as possible. But while I'm at it, I wanted to uh, let you guys know that I have um, launched an HVACR forum. It is at iBleedR22.com. Thought that was a pretty cool name for it. Um, and then I'm working on launching a website for all of my social media. Um, HVAC with Stephen uh, So if you get a chance to check those out, I'd appreciate it. You can sign up for the forum. And um, hit the web page. It's not much more than a preview page right now, but uh, is coming soon. So, 
I will have video on the new micron gauge from BlueVac that ties in with the iManifold. And um, I started to upload a video of the first um, service call for Project Rodnizer, and I think that one will be pretty interesting. So stay tuned. I'm not dead. I am trying to get stuff up there. Just uh, have had other things that have stolen. Subscribe, comment, and share. We'll see you on the next video. Peace out.